Welcome to the Padlet Recap. So, I did promise that one thing I would do with this season is where there were points of uncertainty, I would come back and I would address them. So, from this week's Padlet, and a big shout out to everyone who uh, got involved in the kickoff week in the first week, uh, here's the highlights reel. So, big Big question opening up, uh, the how can we study the course? Now, e-marketing has been designed to be an applied, interactive, but quite frequent sequence of events. So, unlike some of the subjects that have sort of distinct high points, we have submission dates and we have key milestone events that you've got to achieve to continue moving through the course. But we're not about big recall. We're not about uh, trying to cram for an end of season exam. We're not about weekly quizzes. So the best way to study the course is to make use of the assets. We have a pre-recorded video of the lectures. So that's your on-demand content. Those lecture videos are there to go and give you the opportunity to deal with the course content. So we're looking at here, there's the theoretical, and I've pre-recorded a bunch of videos, so in week two, you're gonna be looking at things like strategy models. In week one, there was stuff about the definition and domain of e-marketing, a recap of some marketing theory. Watching these videos gives you a chance to immerse yourself in the theory. Then, what we do with the live learning events, and that's the seminar and the tutorial, is give you a chance to apply those ideas in practice. As we move through the semester, we're gonna bring in some more theory. We're gonna bring in journal articles, and we're going to use those as tools for actually going off and implementing and delivering your e-marketing project. So how best to study it is consume the content that we've created for you, then, take advantage of the application. And that is, in the seminars, we're gonna do training drills. In the tutorials, we're gonna use the collaborative, uh, collegial nature of everyone being in the same room. And Alex is going to administer some training via cooperative participation. And then with the open project, when you go past the ETA assignment and into actually delivering on your project, Week by week, we're going to work in how can we use different aspects of the course content to supplement and support what you're doing in practice. So pretty much the best way to study the course is consume it, value and ownership. So basically go in and read, watch, consume, then go to value and use, apply it. Take a theoretical framework and work through it, use it. So the week that's about to come up, in strategy, we're going to talk to you about strategic models and strategic decision making and ask you to make a decision. And that decision is going to set your strategy for the semester. So that's how best to study the course. Get in there, give it a go, have a shot at it. Questions around the calculation of participation marks. Okay, there is a black box algorithm that I use at the end of semester to create your participation mark. This is to replicate the practices of Google, Bing, and the other search engines insofar as search engine optimization is known to be a thing that exists, and we know that Google has a proprietary hidden mechanism by which they score different websites, and that you make adjustments and you do things and you act and you react on what you think will work. So I'm replicating that experience for you on participation and engagement. There are five channels that you can use to max out your opportunities. One key thing about the participation mark is it is going to be driven by what you do best. So it's about, in the first few weeks, it's about finding your feet, finding what where do you best fit participation? Are you really good in the close quarter stuff and tutorials? Do you love the live learning seminars? Are you all about the Padlet? Are you all about the waddle? So the four channels, 
that are known to you from the outset are Padlet participation, forum, model forum participation, engagement in the seminars, engagement in the tutorials. The fifth channel are opportunities that emerge over the course of the semester. And these are functionally DLC uh, or their short-term events or their bonus rounds. These are opportunities to score additional points by being part of our community and contributing to our community and creating an environment in which your absence would be noticed. So the first of those challenge participation mark bonus things is out in the forum at the moment. But in terms of the overall calculation, I draw on what you've done, what you've identified yourself as a strength and preference, and how well what you have created in terms of the way you've engaged with the course has created something in the course. So it's not just participation, it's not just show up, post twice and leave. It's engagement, it's make a difference, have an impact on the course, have a positive impact on the way our course goes. Uh, now, with regards to that, I built this course so that you could, in fact, never see me, speak to me, or interact with me, and yet still get a high score on engagement. Because the shadow hawker mode, the pre-recorded self-service mode, is how chunks of the internet operate. I've been doing LinkedIn learning courses for the last few months because they're fun, and I've been doing Duolingo to learn Danish because it's not fun. Those are self-service modes. I'm still engaging with the content, I'm still doing things, I'm still participating, I'm still part of this, but I'm not speaking to a lecturer or a tutor or a coordinator directly. So with the live events, they are one way in which you can score points. So if you come along to the seminar and you're participating in your breakout rooms and you're sharing, you're talking in the chat channel, you're uh, sharing ideas, you're giving feedback, you're basically, if you're part of the, the process, if you make it, if you are there and making it a better place for your uh, peers and sharing with them and helping them and engaging them as well, then that's one mode. But if you can't make it to the live events, the other approach then, you know, if you can't make it to the seminars, this shifts your focal point into the Padlet and the Wattle as your best opportunities, your next best opportunities. Uh, you don't have to watch the live learning replay. It's up there if you want to, and I've got this available to everyone. Uh, if you find the Shadow Hawker self-service mode works for you, then use that. The cut down hyperspeed, me just telling you what's going to happen, then telling you to go off and time yourself and do the tasks. That's, if that works for you, use it. If watching the replay works for you, use it. Now the thing about the replay is that it will run in real time. So when I say 10 minutes, 10 minutes to go and do a workshop, 10 minutes will elapse on the video. There'll be a whole bunch of my logo, personal logo sitting there, but it will be 10 minutes. So you can use either the real time replay or the Shadow Hawker. Either protocol is yeah, I, it's set up to do both. I intentionally built this so that someone who had a timetable clash working from remote, in fact, if you were operating out of the USA, so that's the hardest time zone for me to work with, you could still do this subject without any of the live events and still get a good participation grade. Because it's the internet and we do text. Uh, the portfolio summary, all right, on the front, couple of things. Uh, a couple of questions around the ePortfolio. There is a video up on the Waddle site already uh, explaining about the assessment requirements, what we're looking for. Now, the thing about the two questions I've received here um, in terms of how to use the ePortfolio and how it to be laid out and how it works. Well, 
part of the challenge of the ePortfolio assessment task is you've been granted access to a proprietary software platform that, your that we are going to ask you to use to create this and that's your specification. Use the ePortfolio to create an ePortfolio. Use the ePortfolio software to create an ePortfolio that reflects on the semester. It's actually part of the assessment task for you to embrace this challenge, embrace this software and make the portfolio yours. Build it how it reflects you. Create it, work with it. Now, if it turns out you've got a pretty good idea as to what you want to do with this, you can share how you're doing your portfolio. You can post up guides and advice. In fact, last year, one of our uh, squad did end up recording a short video on how they were using the ePortfolio of the Mahara platform. And they shared that with the community. That would definitely score them some engagement points, by the way. Just saying. But the whole thing is, the portfolio is intentionally open-ended because this is part of your professional development. This is part of your work integrated, life integrated learning of here is the software we have provided you with the ePortfolio. And we've told you that we want you to build an ePortfolio with it. Your task for 40 points is to create that portfolio, but without me telling you stepwise what I want to see, without me telling you stepwise what I, how you use it, what you do with it. Because I want you to create a portfolio that reflects you. I am going to be the end recipient of that portfolio. I am the one who will mark it. What I am looking for is the evidence of the creator. I'm looking for you to be present in the creation of your work. So there aren't more specific guidelines. There aren't more structured guidelines because the more structured, any more structure than what I've currently provided will take away from the learning opportunity. And I don't want to give you cookie cutter modes. I don't want to give you boring, um, don't want to tell you it must use X, Y, Z, K. The only thing that's absolutely got to be in there, uh, the sketch, self-characterization sketch, one of those at the start, one of those at the end, and maybe one in the middle, because they are qualitative measures of transformation. Benchmarking yourself this in the first week, or first couple of weeks, against benchmarking yourself at the end and seeing what's different. That's part of it because we're looking at the journal, the ePortfolio as a way to say, how do I experience the course? How did I change as an individual as a result of engaging in the course? So it's not my intention to make it more difficult than it needs to be. It is my intention to make it your time to shine. This is co-creation of value writ large. You have been given the resource, the ePortfolio login and access, and I want you to create something for me. I want you to put yourself out there as a developer of content. Make something that resonates with you, that uses the portfolio, that explains your experience. And that's what I'm looking for. And also, uh, thank you everyone who put in these questions. Uh, the recaps are going to come. I'm going to do these recaps because it's nice to be able to go and like respond live in real time. So thank you for that.